What if a circuit board could be more than just functional? It could be a work of art. In today's video, I'll show you how to make stunning transparent acrylic PCBs using a CNC with a surprisingly simple process. Let's get started. The materials we will use are a three millimeter thick transparent cast acrylic sheet and a sheet of adhesive backed copper foil with a copper thickness of 0.06 millimeters. To mill the PCB, I'll use the Carvera Air CNC and Makera Cam to create the toolpaths. I've designed an electronic circuit in Fusion to demonstrate the process, but this can be accomplished with any PCB design software that can generate Gerber files. The circuit includes a 555 timer that alternately flashes two LEDs, and the PCB design incorporates through hole components. For milling the PCB traces, we will utilize a 30 degree V-bit. The width of the cut will vary based on the cutting depth. For a cut depth of 0.07 millimeters, the cut width will be 0.238 millimeters, which we will set as the minimum distance between traces in the design rules. To export the Gerber files from Fusion, we select Manufacturing and then export the Gerber files. This creates a zip file, which we then need to extract. Next I'll use MakeAeroCam to convert the Gerber files into G-code. First we will edit the stock, changing the material to plastic with dimensions of 100mm in length, 70mm in width and a height of 3mm. Now we can import the Gerber files. We'll start with the copper bottom Gerber, followed by the profile Gerber and finally the drill files. Before creating toolpaths, we need to make a few changes. The profile was imported as two rectangles, which may cause issues, so I'll delete one of them. Additionally, we need to mirror the bottom side of the PCB to prepare it for milling. To do this, we'll select all of the imported layers, then navigate to the Edit menu, choose Transform, and select Mirror. With both the horizontal and center options selected, we will click on Generate Mirror. Next, I'll move the design to the center of the stock by clicking Move and selecting Quick Line Stock. We will not use the copper bottom pad layer, so I'll turn that layer off. Now we can create toolpaths. First, we double click the 0.7mm drill layer to select all of the 0.7mm holes. Then we navigate to the 2D Path menu and choose 2D Drilling. Next, we select an 0.7mm drill bit from the tool library and choose plastic as the material. We will set the drill tip end depth to 3.3 millimeters to ensure we cut all the way through the acrylic sheet. Then we change the tool number to three and enable PEC drilling. Once everything is set, we click on calculate to generate the toolpath. Finally, I'll rename the toolpath for easier identification. For the 0.8mm holes, I will create several toolpaths, each containing four holes. This allows me to remove any acrylic swarf from the drill bit after each toolpath, preventing accumulation. To do that, I will select four holes at a time, create the toolpath, choose the 0.8mm tool, and assign a tool number. For the remaining holes, I repeat the process, assigning a different tool number for each drill size. Next, we will create a toolpath to mill the copper traces. To select the traces, double click on the copper bottom Gerber layer. Then navigate to the 2D path menu and click on 2D contour. Choose the 30 degree V-bit tool. Select copper as the material. Change the end depth to 0.07 millimeters and the step down to 0.04 millimeters. Ensure that the outside edge option is selected. Finally, click on calculate to generate the toolpath. Once the toolpath is created, we can rename it. Now let's create the toolpath to cut the profile of the board. First, double click on the profile layer to select it. Next, navigate to the 2D path menu and click 2D contour. We'll use a 1 8 inch diameter 25 millimeter long single flute M mill to cut out the profile. I 
I will enable ramping to ensure a smoother entry into the material. We'll set the end depth to 3.3 millimeters to cut through the material. Since we use double sided tape to secure the board, I won't add tabs. Finally, click calculate to create the toolpath. After that, we can rename the toolpath. The final step is to create a toolpath for drilling holes in the copper layer of the circuit board. To make it easier to select all the holes, we can disable the unnecessary PCB layers, then left click and drag to select the holes. Now we can create a drilling toolpath. Choose an 0.8mm drill bit and select copper as the material. Finally, set the drill tip end depth to 0.5mm. The last thing we have to do is export the G-code. To do this, right click on each toolpath and save each file individually. Next, I'll upload the G-code files to the Carvera in my workshop using the Carvera controller software on my desktop. To do this, I select each file and upload it. The Carvera then stores the files on an SD memory card inside the machine. Next we'll set up the CNC machine. I've cut a 100 by 70 millimeter piece of acrylic and a matching piece of hardboard. Then I applied double sided tape to the hardboard and attached the acrylic to it. After that, I clamped the acrylic and the hardboard to the Carvera's table bed. Here are the tools we will be using along with their corresponding tool numbers. Additionally, I'll use an air blast nozzle to blow away any chips. For the air supply, I'm using a relatively quiet air compressor and a bench mounted regulator. We're now ready to create the circuit board. I'll begin by loading the G-code for the 0.7mm drill. The work origin is set to X0Y0 from Anchor 1. Both the scan margin and Auto Z probe are enabled, while auto leveling is disabled. Next we click Run. Install the probe. And press the button. The length of the probe is measured using the tool setter. Then the probe locates the top surface of the material and sets the z-axis origin. Next we install the 0.7mm drill bit. Once again its length is measured with the tool setter. And then the holes are drilled. The air blast is set to a relatively high volume of air to help prevent the acrylic buildup on the drill bit. Then we repeat the process, selecting each drill G-code file, but this time without scan margin or the Z-probe enabled. After drilling the holes, we can remove the protective film from the top surface of the acrylic. Next, we cut a piece of copper sheet to a size of 85 by 52 millimeters and prepare to attach it. We start by positioning the copper on a small section of the acrylic. Slowly peeling back the backing sheet, we smooth the copper down, ensuring that we eliminate any bubbles or creases. Now we're ready to mill the copper traces. First I select the copper bottom G-code file, enable the scan margin and auto leveling features and click run. Next I switch the drill bit to the probe and press the start button. 
The laser in the probe draws a rectangle around the work area, providing a useful visual check. The machine then probes the surface in a grid pattern, creating a height map. This height map will be used to adjust the G-code, ensuring that the copper is cut to a consistent depth. Finally, I swap the probe for the 30 degree V-bit, which will mill the copper traces. Next we load the G-code to drill through the copper layer. The probe does not need to be enabled for this step. I then install an 0.8mm drill bit. The drill creates holes in the copper layer, exactly where we previously drilled through the acrylic. Now we can begin removing some of the unused copper. Next we can run the profile G code using a 1 8 of an inch diameter single flute end mill. The final step is to remove the rest of the unwanted copper. I will unclamp the board to make it easier to detach the acrylic and remove the remaining copper. This is the resulting board. I think it looks pretty good. Now I imagine many of you are wondering, can the components be soldered without melting the acrylic? The answer is yes, it's not a problem at all. Just use a fine tip soldering iron and work quickly without lingering too long. Through hole soldering it even strengthens the tracks by clamping them to the components on the opposite side of the board. I've made quite a simple single sided board here but there is no reason why you can't make more complex double sided designs. If you want to make one of these for yourself I'll leave links for everything I used in the video description including the Fusion and Make Error Cam files. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more projects. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.